Welcome to another episode of the DJ Podcast. In this video tutorial, I'll be going over cue points inside of Tractor Pro 2. If you haven't done so already, you want to toggle down the advanced deck options, which can be done by clicking this arrow underneath the pitch slider. Tractor Pro allows you to have eight hot cue points, and you can have additional cue points, but they will not show up in one of the eight slots that you see here. Adding a cue point is really simple. You can either click where you want at a specific point in the track, you know, find the spot that you like, and then click on one of the hot cue points, and you'll see that I have now created my second hot cue. I can also add cue points while I'm playing a track. So if I'm playing my track here, as you can see, I can simply click on a new slot and it will create a cue point at that place in time. Once I've created a hot cue, or I've jumped to it, when I press the regular cue button, you'll see that it goes back to the last cue point that I selected. So if I want to, I can jump through these cue points. I can also change what type of cue point is assigned to each hot cue. You can see that number one is colored white, and two and three are kind of a turquoise light blue color. And the color indicates what type of cue point is assigned to each hot cue. The white colored cue point with the triangle on the top is a cue point for your beat grid. And this will help Tractor determine where the beats are in the track. Two and three are regular cue points. They have a flag pointed to the right and those are just your general all-purpose cue points. If you want to just jump between places in the track, that's what you would use. There are also a couple of other different types of cue points. For example, there's the fade in and fade out cue points. These are used with the cruise mode feature that I've covered in a previous tutorial. There's also a load cue point. Load cue points are especially handy if you have a track with a long build up as an intro. By using a load cue point you can load up the track right at that first beat and not have to worry about jumping between cue points each time you load that track. There's one other type of hot cue that you can have and that is for a loop. Loops can also be added as hot cues. To do this you could simply create a loop that you like and you could either click store or simply click on a hot cue and you'll see that the loop has now been saved as a hot cue. But that's not all that you can do with your cue points. One thing, for example, is you can jump between cue points with these two buttons here. You can also assign that feature to buttons on your MIDI controller to jump between cue points. You can also rename a cue point. Maybe I want to have my load here, and I want to say, you know, a uh, breakdown. I could type that in there. And that way I have a visual reminder of why I set that cue point there. The last thing that I'll go over is how to move hot cues from one button to another. So let's say, for example, that I want to move cue point number three, my load marker, to cue point number seven. I would simply click on the hot cue that I want to change, then click the map button, and then click the other hot cue button that I want to map it to. Now you can see that I have my load marker on hot cue number seven. That's it for this video tutorial on cue points inside of Tractor Pro. For more video tutorials, check out thedjpodcast.com. Thanks for watching.